Hey, what's up? This is Karen Civil, and I'm chilling on Ladies First with my girl Jen. What's going on, guys? You go Jen from Brooklyn here. Another episode of Ladies First. This might be the final one of the year, and I have the perfect guest with me to do that. I've been chasing her for a long time, and I finally have her here, the Karen Civil. What's up, Karen? Hi, I'm excited to be here. You have not been chasing me. <laughs> I'm <laughs> so happy to be here. I got to New York. I was like, I have to come do this. Yes. So I'm excited. Thank you for having me. Karen, I would say you are a digital mastermind, yes. honestly. You you set the tone for all things digital content, I feel. And you know, I don't know if a lot of people know this, or if they do, Karen, let's start from the beginning. Karen started her roots here. Yes, I was an intern at this very station for Funkmaster Flex. So it's just great to be back and to be doing all of this. It's it's so surreal at times. So how did you go from being that intern for Funk Flex? Well, first, how did you even get into that internship? So Angie Martinez had her apprentice contest. This was the second year. And I said, you know what? I'm going to enter. I'm going to write her a heartfelt email. I was like, hopefully she responds. I kid you not, She, her intern at the time, Mike, responded in like 30 minutes and said, hey, she loved your email. She wants you to come down. It was like the next day. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm so excited. I thought I got the internship, uh -huh. but it was. I had to remember it was a contest. Mm -hmm. And I am the most timid and quiet person. But when it came to this, I said, I have to win. All of those nerves and everything went away. And I said, I'm just going to continue to work hard. And and try to get this internship. I made it to the top three, didn't get it. Um, so now I'm back at home and I used to just call the hotline when Flex was on just to see if maybe like, hey, you need an intern. You know, I did the thing with Angie mm -hmm. and Tat Wizza answered. Tat, and he, shout out to Tat. Shout out to Tat. And he was like, hey, I got your info right here. We were actually gonna call you because you know, we thought you did a great job. I said, well, I called you. So <laughs> this works out, said this works out perfectly. And then from there, it was just great. I had the experience of working with you know, Dennis, Tat, and Flex, I just feel like they gave me my first start. So many ideas and so many things, you know, um, manifested with, with you know, the couple of years that I were here, that I was here. Mm -hmm. And at that time, I mean, in the back of your mind, because digital at that time was still relatively new, right? Yeah. Not the, everyone was on it. Not, you just had certain websites, you know, you had MySpace, you know, Facebook oh, at MySpace. the time, yeah, Facebook was just for college kids. Right. And there was no, like, real Twitter, and, you know, obviously no Instagram or, like, the Snapchats and everything else we have now. So I remember I used to, like, try to push flex. I said, you know, you have all this content. Um, let's, like, try to record it and do stuff, put it on the site. And, you know, the 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 media team, the Hot97.com team used to leave at 5. So I used to try to get as much content as I can so he could be featured on the site. I would just go out my way and try to just, you know, just find ways to make the show better. And at the time, Flex was like, Karen... I just need you to chill out, <laughs> get this food, get these records together. He oh, didn't, the yeah, OG, he didn't, you know, the yeah, he didn't get it. He just was just like, you're doing too much. And, you know, I had to make the decision of, okay, now I got to branch off and go somewhere where I can really utilize what I feel like my strong suits are and my, my skills. And I did that going to Diplomat Records, but it was great. A couple years ago, Flex called me at night and was like, hey, I'm ready to start this Inflex We Trust thing. And it was great that he called me and no one else, you know, and he didn't reach out to anyone else. And it was something that I wanted to do with him. And I'm glad that, you know, people were like, were you ever frustrated with him? I'm like, no, it just, it just wasn't the time for that. Yeah. And I said, you know, with patience and it eventually happened and it, you know, and, and, it, and it's incredible because he has such a great site mm -hmm. and he's in this, he's, you know, he calls himself a digital, digital. monster. Yes. And I'm just glad so that, I'm just glad that I was able to, you know, to help him, you know, start this, push his whole machine. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited by it. You've not only done it for Flex, mm -hmm. you've done that for a lot of people in this industry. I mean, yeah. I can, I, off the, there's just too many I can name, but, yeah. um, how do you stay relevant doing that? How does this switch kind of marketing from each celebrity to the next? Because I'm sure you have a different tactic for each mm -hmm. person, right? Each person is definitely different. I don't take on a million clients. I take on people I know it would make sense. Mm -hmm. You know, I understand their brand. I have to be a fan of the brand. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, it's just never about a dollar for me. Mm -hmm. So if it's someone where, you know, I've worked with YG, Mary J. Blas, I felt like I know that I can help engage and move it up and, and do certain things and create these synergies and do stuff. I said, yeah, um, I'm definitely gonna do it because I know, you know, 
even I want to know even when it gets tough because mm -hmm. you're going to they're going to be like, what? No, this and that, that I wouldn't get discouraged because I just it's it's something that I really wanted to do. So, um, yeah, I just honestly I just I just make sure with with each one. It's something that it's in line with their brand. It's in line with who they are as an individual. And it just makes sense. Nothing ever is the same. And I just always want the tones and the conversations to be different. So you don't think like oh, why does Wayne's Twitter look like Mary J. Blige's? You will never see that, or you'll never know. You know, I always want it to feel like it's the actual celebrity, and mm -hmm. you don't ever know when it's Karen or when it's not. So now let's talk about the Beats mm -hmm. campaign, the whole Beats movement. I mm -hmm. definitely feel like you had a major part in building that out. So when you get the call from Beats, you already living in Jersey, right? You were here. Yeah. I lived in I lived in Jersey. I bought my first condo, and I was very Damn. excited. And then, you know, they sent me over an offer, and I was like, I don't know if I want to go to L.A. I remember having this conversation with um, Beat Out at Rap Radar. And he was like, why? I said, I don't know. I mean, I'm cool. I was I was very content. I said, I just bought a Nissan. I got this new Nissan. <laughs> I got this new condo. Chilling. I said, yeah, I said, you know, and then I moved to the good side of town where I was from in Elizabeth. I said, I'm good. Like, he said, Karen, you don't want more for yourself? And I was just like, mm, this one I realized. I was like, Karen, you are being content. If anything happens and it doesn't go well, you can always come back. Mm -hmm. And I decided to pack it up. I moved. I was like about the 12th employee. And the difference between me and the rest of employees, I said, you know, I'm going to brand myself. I'm going to continue branding myself outside of this company, but I'm going to brand myself with this company where when you think of Beats by Dre, you think of Jimmy Iovine, Dr. Dre, Karen Civil. When you need Beats, you know, I got to call Karen. I need something from Beats, I got to call Karen. You don't, you know, it, it didn't matter what tier you were type of celebrity from A to Z. You just think, I got to call Karen. And that's what I did for many years, and I, and I helped that company grow. But then it was also time for me to grow. So um, I decided to, like, leave about a year and a half, but I still have a relationship with them. I still do, I still do work with them as part of my always civil company. Um, so it's just, yeah, it's been great. And they've expanded and they're doing such incredible things that, you know, it's just great that we're able to grow together. Yeah, you've definitely been doing incredible things. Like, you're dropping a book, you mm -hmm. went on tour, you just, you have these productions going on, you're yeah. directing music videos, and it's just so much. Does, do you think you'll ever get to a point where you're just like, you know what, Karen, I got to chill out? No. Take time to myself and just. No, I, I always find time for myself. You know, I'm going on vacation soon. But what I like, what I like to do is I tell people, I'm like, all the things I wanted to do when I was a kid, I'm not kidding you. Mm -hmm. I had, that was the first time I ever created a vision board. We probably don't even know that we called, they were called vision boards. It's when you cut up, when you know you used to cut up all the things in the yeah. magazine. And just be like, well, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And I remember when I was young, I was like, I'm going to move to L.A. I'm going to do this. I want to direct. I want to meet the president. I want to do this. And I just like, all the things I listed, I found the notebook. And I'm just doing everything in my notebook. And how was that? Because I saw mm -hmm. your Instagram and you were at the White House. I was mm -hmm. like, look at Karen out there. <laughs> That was that was incredible. You know, Terrence J made that possible for me. Um, he invited me to come cover an event media wise. And from there, you know, I met so many different people there who followed me and who was just like, oh, my gosh, can't believe you're here. We're a fan of yours. They asked me to come back. I went back again during the Christmas holiday. And then they recently asked me to speak for this women empowerment event. And I was just like, this is a whole nother world. This is surreal. And then Hillary's team reached out and was like, hey, you know, we love everything that you're doing in your space, in your community. And the fact, again, I just tell people I'm just myself. We are women in the industry. So, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people have hesitations about having a woman in office. You know, mm -hmm. are you are you. Can you say yours obviously a supporter of Hillary Clinton and mm -hmm. her campaign next year? Like how do you feel about that? Um I'm definitely a, I'm definitely a supporter. I'm not going to pretend I'm the I have the most knowledge in politics mm -hmm. and I know there are some things that people questionable things that may you know she may have said in the past, but what I do appreciate and like is the issues that are happening firsthand in our community with, you know, um people of color and I don't just mean African Americans, I just people of color just Asian, Hispanic, and whatever, she's addressing those things, you know, and, and it's similar to how Barack Obama handles something. When something happens, he puts out a statement. So she's doing this, she's doing the same things, and I like that she's speaking on these issues. And two things that are big for me is um, mental health and immigration. Obviously, I'm a Haitian American, so, you know, to have that, to have those conversations with her and to know, you know, to 
to shed light on it is important to me. So that's why it's just like we don't have a lot of options. You're a very proud Haitian woman. Mm -hmm. And you went so far as to go back home mm -hmm. and build a school and a playground. Mm -hmm. Like, that's just dope. I think we all get to a point where it's just like it's, it's bigger than us, you know. I was I, I lived a very modest life. Even when I got to LA, I had a small apartment, did certain things, and then I just realized I was like, okay, Karen, it's okay to have nice things. Mm -hmm. So then now it's like you worked hard for them. I acquired all these nice things, mm -hmm. and I said, this is great. You know, you know, people think it's it's just all about the money, and I was just like, okay, Karen, this is not what you're working for. You know, you want to create a lasting legacy. You want to you want to leave a footprint. You're not going to be able to leave this truck, and this condo, and every all your little you know material things. You have to do something outside of you, and and it started with this playground. It, it was just an idea, and I said, you know, I want to build a playground. I understand the importance of a playground. I had two options when I left my house. I can go to the right or to the left. There was two parks to choose from. Jefferson Park or Kellogg's Park. Mm -hmm. So I said, you know, I know these kids out there probably don't have one. I actually got with this engineer, um, Pascal, who helped me when I got there, picked me up, took me to where I needed to see, see different places. And we are in the process of, of, of finishing everything now. The kids are in school. You know, we're, we're, keep, we're continuing to keep it going throughout the school year. So I'm just, I'm really excited to get them running water, mm -hmm. to get them a bathroom, benches where they can sit and eat and, you know, shade from the sun, play basketball, go on the swings. It's just really the, the piping and the running water and the bathroom was just, just, it was just, to the common person, it's like, it's a bathroom. Yeah. But for me, it's, it, for me and for them, it's important. I'm just glad I was able to give them something. It's just straight love, I would yeah. say, exuding from, from your playground and yeah. your school for sure. Yeah. At, speaking of love, mm -hmm. you're very open with your relationship on social media. And I love it because I love love. Yeah. Is it hard having a relationship in um, this industry at the rate that you're doing? Because a lot of men get intimidated by that, right? I'll say it's, it's definitely intimidating. And then because of the way people perceive you. But I was okay with having an open relationship um, and saying it on social media. And, you know, unfortunately, that relationship didn't work. And now I'm, like, dating and I'm okay. It, you know, it, it is hard, but I just feel like with anything you do, you have to... You know, with work, with finding friends and certain things, you got you to gotta kiss a few frogs before you find your prince. Mm -hmm. And I'm okay with that. I'm open. It's not like a thing. I'm dating now, so it's like I go on a few dates, and it's okay. just like, yeah, it's... it's Anybody that stands out? Anyone? No, no, nobody's solidified. Okay. I'm not giving oh, anyone oh, a just shout out know. right now. Just want to know. I'm That's like, cool. <laughs> so you guys, listen, better not even think I'm talking about you. So what is an ideal man? For Karen Civil. You know, most people are like, oh, I want him tall, I want him this, I want him that. I don't care about any of that. It's just honestly the way you make me feel and the way you treat me. Okay. You know, um, and understanding, like, you know, women to me are queens. You know, you That's still right. open the Talk door, you still hold their items, you still, like, you still care about how they feel and certain things, and you make them feel good. You make them feel protected. So that's just, like, my big thing. Yes, for sure. Yeah. Dropping gems, Miss Karen Civil. Just remember that before you slide into the DMs. <laughs> <laughs> I got to ask you, Karen, as we wrap this up, as far mm -hmm. as just women in hip-hop and just mm -hmm. women in the industry, mm -hmm. what do you think... How do you think we're we're going as far as this field? Where do you see us going? And also in a digital aspect, where do you see digital going? I, I think we're going to have so many options for entertainment, which is a great thing. You no longer have to just watch it on TV. You can subscribe to a YouTube channel. You probably can subscribe to a Vine to watch episodes. People have Instagram episodes. Just entertainment is going to be everywhere, and it's going to be um, at your leisure and your convenience. And to me, that's great. We've now, before we used to just see series on TV, now we have Netflix. And and I just, I just like that even Tidal is getting into creating content there. Again, it's all about, you know, these companies creating content and showcasing that we're, you're more than just one thing. And as far as, like, women in hip-hop, I don't like to, like, categorize us and say, oh, we're doing this. I just say, you know, we're individuals in this entertainment industry. I don't look at it as women as men, you know, um, but... We're going to continue to do wonderful things. I think, you know, we're going to continue to grow and we're, and, and we're going to be good. We're, I think women in general, we're just in such a great space that it'll be, we're, we're, we'll be good. All right, Karen. So now it's part of my show that I do in Ladies First. It's mm -hmm. called This or That. All right, let's do it. New Jersey or L.A.? <sighs> oh, you can't do that. I can't. <laughs> you can't do that. I'm sorry, my Jerseyans. LA. LA. Oh, LA. I'm sorry. LA. Travel around the world as a living forever or run a Fortune 500 company? Travel. Passport stamped. 
White Castle or In and Out? In and Out. I'm an LA girl now. In and Out. Lauren Hill or Whitney Houston? <gasps> <laughs> Y'all can't do that. <laughs> Whitney is closer to me since she's in Newark, so I'm going with Whitney. Whitney? Yeah, I'm going with Whitney. Free Spirit or Control Freak? What if I'm a little bit of both? Gotta pick one, one or the other. I'm gonna go with free spirit because that's what I need to do more because I'm a control freak. <laughs> <laughs> Sneakers or heels? <gasps> I love these reactions, by the way, you guys. <laughs> because I thought it was gonna be like apples and oranges. Nah. It's just like. <laughs> I'm gonna go with heels. I'll yeah. go with heels. Okay. Who would you have liked to do digital work for, Biggie or Pac? Tupac Shakur. All day. Yes, Dang, Tupac. Dang, girl, you L.A. all the way. Yeah, yeah, no, but I just, I'm hurt. No, I, I, I love Biggie, but I was, I've always been a Tupac fan. My mom used to, like, play Dear Mama because she had the one song for her. <laughs> so right. she made me a Tupac fan. <laughs> Get advice from this person forever. Oprah or Michelle no, Obama? No, 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 no. This girl, one is not fair. You gotta do one. This one is not fair. Y'all do some hard ones in here. I can't, oh, pick, sure do. I can't pick between those two. That's not fair. It should be like an equal. Okay. More romantic, cooking a meal together at home or dancing the night away? Cooking a meal at home. That's sweet. Yes. Twitter or IG? <gasps> mm, Twitter. Because I want you to, because I can post pictures on Twitter. Oh, look, see? Yeah. That's why I pay you the big bucks. There you go. <laughs> uh, have a number one bestseller book for a month or be the most followed woman on social media? Number one bestseller. Talk about it. You can buy these. <laughs> I'm, okay. I'm good with that. I'm good now, with that number one seller. Now I know how you're going to answer this next one. But if, if it was to go down somewhere and fight somewhere, who would be the first person you'd call on? YG or Nipsey Hussle? <laughs> That's hard. That's hard. Who would have that bad? I'll call Nipsey and text YG. Okay. Okay. But he'd be the first one. Yeah, YG would be the first that I text, and then Nipsey would be the first that I call. <laughs> okay. <laughs> What's worse, blogs that say you and a married celeb had an affair or accidentally leaking a Secret Beats campaign? What's all oh, the affair? Mm -hmm. The campaign, you can you can get over. The affair is just, ugh, no. Not happening. Yeah. KarenCivil.com or LiveCivil.com? <sighs> um, they're both my babies. LiveCivil.com. LiveCivil? Yes. Final question. You ready? If you were stuck on an island and could only bring one person there with you, would it be Lil Wayne or our own Funk Flex? I'm going to bring Wayne I, only because I feel bad not picking Flex. Flex <laughs> is not going to be here for the conversation or nothing else. True. Wayne will figure out some barks in the trees to go skating, <laughs> to hang out, smoke maybe, do something. Flex ain't going to be here for it. Flex is just going to be gonna over. He's going to jump in the ocean and try to he, swim away. He, yeah, he's not, he's not tolerating this. So I think Wayne will be a little bit more fun. Karen, thank you so much for sitting down with me. But also everyone out there too who want to watch this and feel inspired by you because there's a lot of young girls out there who look up to you. Yeah, and, and I appreciate that. And the book? Yes. Do you book. live civil? You can pick it up on livecivilbook.com. And I'm, I'm excited about it. It's, it's, it's more or less like a workbook. Okay. You know, you read my four different, four different chapters. You read my stories. And I left some blank pages in the back. So you can continue on. You can add certain things. And, yeah, I just, I just want you to, to take it with you, with your planner, just your every day, and just look like if she was able to do it, I'm able to do it. I didn't have a silver spoon. I didn't have any connections. I didn't have a boyfriend. There was no sleeping with anyone. It was just... It it was just determination, hard work, and believing in myself.